coaching clinic today. What's that like when it comes around? Because it comes around every year. Yeah. What's it like to have the, the guys here? It's a lot of fun. You get reminded about uh, just the, the purity of the game. You got a lot of coaches out there who are who are teaching in high school, who are not, but are devoting a lot of time to these high school kids. And it's a good reminder that they're a big reason we're able to um, project kids uh, and develop kids. Uh, they, they, they've done a great job in the state of Utah, at least, uh, for sure, is what I'm speaking to. So it's a good opportunity to just connect with these guys, um, you know, build relationships, and that reminder that there's there's awesome, a lot of good coaches out there. So a lot of fun. And then to hear from Coach uh, Numatalola today as our keynote speaker was a great honor to, to hear him talk about culture, um, some of the things that he, he believes in. And it was a, a lot of confirmation of things we're doing and then also just some new ideas of, of implementation on building culture. So wonderful day in, in all aspects. We talked to Coach Numatalolo. Impressions of him, I mean, you, you touched on it, but impressions, what does he bring with that, that conversation that he had with both you and the and the high school coaches and yeah. kind of made that presentation. Uh, Coach Numantololo today, just being around him, it was a good reminder that um, there's there's plenty of, of ways to be successful, and that includes your personality. Very calm, mild-mannered, you know, uh, mild-mannered man and um, is, uh, isn't as fiery as, as some other coaches out there, but he does have a switch, and I think that that's an important balance there is, is um, you know, so it was really awesome to see him today that you can be true to yourself. Uh, you don't have to change a bunch or adapt to what you see a lot of on TV and can still find a lot of success. So really, really um, inspired by his humility. Keaton Slovis has brought it up like three or four times now. It's become a little bit of a myth how he, when he first transferred here, he called up a bunch of those receivers and said, hey, workouts are at this place this time. Like, let's get some work in, let's throw some balls, let's develop chemistry and whatnot. How big of a deal is that for a new quarterback to meet up with his receivers? And can you kind of see sort of the difference, I guess, that made? And for a guy who's been here for like three and a half days, I think, yeah. some, of the, some of the guys you're working with? Yeah, absolutely. And, and Keaton is a perfect example of just because it's your first year in a program, you can still handle yourself like a veteran. He's been around. He's been in a lot of different programs, played a lot of different offenses, um, been around a lot of different personalities. And so for him to, to set the precedence early, not only was able to uh, develop some chemistry that we needed between the perimeter guys and him, but it also allowed him to um, start to develop in his role as a leader. And um, I've been really impressed with him, his leadership. Um, you can see he loves football, and um, I love the way he carries himself, both on and off the field, and I, he's just going to keep getting better. So I've been really pr uh, pleased with Keaton so far. If body language says anything, then you've hit a home run with him. Big yeah. smiles, really good communication. I mean, it just seems like he's really far ahead of the game. Yeah, I catch myself a lot. I, I can be very uh, impulsive emotionally. and. Um, fire off you know I went off today a little bit on a ref and when you see someone like Keaton you see a player who's able on a mistake maybe it's a drop pass a misassignment that's not even his fault and to be positive and optimistic and have energy about it it's a good reminder as a coach to say all right I, I could take a, a note from a you know 20 year old kid and so grateful for his example how he carries himself and it rubs off to all the other players um, he, he exudes confidence he's able to you know, give a lot of energy and positivity to our guys. And once again, we're lucky to have him around. Kalani's, Kalani's yeah. talked about just, you know, having more physicality, more tackling and things in spring than maybe has yeah. been done in the past. How's that impacted the receiving group? Uh, a, a lot. You know, it's, it's um, there's a lot of times in the frame of practice when you're not going live where it, uh, it could have been a lot of coulda, shoulda, wouldas. Like maybe the play's made, maybe it's not. And so to be able to have a, a reference point and a gauge that, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. The tackle was made, the block was made, it wasn't, um, is huge. And we're able to, I think, uh, uh, effectively coach a lot more off of those live clips. But it's that fine line of, of keeping them healthy as well. And I think we've balanced that out really well this spring where we need to do some live stuff, but we're also being uh, conscious uh, of their um, of their health. How do you try and walk that line just as a staff? I mean, kind of looking at it, because I can yeah. see that balance. You don't want to, get to lose guys and right. you know, have them lose that time, but at the same time, that physicality. Yeah, so a, big, try and walk it? a big part of that is just our sports science right now, like okay. to be able to, to have GPS on these, uh, you know, trackers on these guys to see how much they've ran, how their 
they're, they're, they're performing at a certain point in practice. The science behind that is really advantageous. So we can gauge how long practice should be, what the intensity should be, how many periods should be live. And then a lot of it is just being in tune with your players. We see them every day. Maybe they're running a little more gingerly, you know, and, and maybe they look fresh. And so a lot of it is a combination of feel, just the, um, how, how knowing your guys and the science behind it. And so we're grateful to have those resources, the support staff to be able to um, detect a lot of those things. And, and we've, we've been really fortunate up to this point with, with uh, health in spring ball. Projecting then the way that now you hope that impacts fall and then the season, how do you view that? Like, what do you expect the, the, the difference to be this fall when you get to that point? Uh, in terms of just just the physicality, how how much difference oh. do you feel like it'll be when you get to small, fall and then into the season? Yeah, a lot more. Especially the healthier guys are, the more you're able to to kind of amp it up a little bit. And so, like I said, between the strength and conditioning staff, the training room, our nutritionists, we as coaches have a lot of confidence that these guys are going to be at you know much higher level in terms of their health. And now we can we can push the envelope a little bit more in physicality, and these guys will be more hungry for it um, because they'll feel right. And so I'm super excited to see see you know come time in the fall when we do go live. I think there's going to be a lot of excitement, and guys are going to be ready and healthy to do it. Looking ahead to pro day tomorrow, do you think there's anything left for Apuka or Jaren to get out of it that they need to show? And what are the conversations just in general preparation wise with you? Yeah, I always think there's more to show. Um, you know, a lot of times, my opinion, you, you can you can kill something at the at the combine and do really well and just completely put it to rest. I'm not, I'm not saying that's the wrong approach, but instead of saying, "Oh, this guy doesn't need to do that," this guy doesn't need to do that. There's always something you can showcase, whether it's the testing, which I know those guys, some of those guys didn't do at the combine, but on the field work, it's also an opportunity to show like your personality, to show like your positivity, your energy. There's just a lot of things you can showcase um, at a pro day. Um, and so I think I think there's always always some more you can do. Conversations with is just excitement. I you know I was just talking to a couple of those guys today, Gunner, um, Puka, and, and they're just excited. They're ready to roll, and they've been training. They've been sacrificing a lot. You have all these sacrifices you make nutrition-wise, um, all this training you do for for four seconds of a drill, right, or six seconds of a drill, or a lift, or a jump. And so there's a lot of anticipation for that, and so that that comes with a lot of excitement so I'm excited to see how these guys perform tomorrow. Is Gunner fully healthy at this point? And yeah to my knowledge he is. He's ready to roll. He looks looks the part and says he feels great. If an NFL team calls you and asks what they're getting if they're gonna say they're gonna use like a third round pick on Puka, what are you telling them that they're gonna get for their third round pick? Oh man well well I mean it sounds cliche but I'm gonna say stick to your gut and you probably like him because what you watch on film and what you see of him in person. And so I don't, you know, I, I, I try to be cautious in like overselling my guys. Those guys do a good job at being super thorough. The film says enough. And then I can really speak more to just the type of leader he is, the, the, the charisma he has, how energetic he is, how much he loves football. I'll keep pushing those things and the film speaks for itself. And so um, any conversations that I have with those guys tomorrow, I'm excited to promote these guys because they deserve all of it. What has what has stood out to you most about the wide receiver group week three into practice, spring practices? Yeah, um, they haven't lost their edge. Um, we are down in numbers. We're thin right now, and uh, a lot of the times in the past, when I've been thin in numbers, you start to feel um, kind of the stress, the anxiety kick in. These guys are optimistic. They're positive. Even the guys who are out and injured are. They're in drills, they're, they're teaching these guys, you know, they're giving them coaching points. So I just love the overall feel of the group, whether guys are going or not, there's that camaraderie you want. They're, they're, they're being energy givers, not energy takers. Like those, those things we're preaching, they're, they're staying true to it. So I've uh, been really pleased with them. Perfect, thank you. Yep. You guys good? Hey, thank you. Cool, appreciate you guys. Yep, see you tomorrow.